So George, it's time for another episode of Project Nomang, and this time, it looks like we're gonna be starting making some real horsepower. Well, the time has come, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. So might as well. Mm. Just got the engine back, the machining, the engine from Dandy Engines. Yep, always do my stuff, and they do and a good job. we've got a heap of go fast gear from Michael at Dominator Motorsports Australia. He's been an absolute legend with this engine build. Yep. He's helped us with a lot of stuff, and his stuff's unreal. So he's got a really, really good uh, range of go fast barrow bits mm. and they've proven themselves as well so yeah really really happy with his um yeah. customer service and, and the help that he's given us plus the parts they look really good too. we'll go into that yeah absolutely later on in the yeah video. for sure now if things have changed course a little bit 2021 has been a pretty you know, let's say challenging year i would say so yeah absolutely down south especially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um we thought we would have been able to go to the track more. The long and the short of it, we don't want the car just sitting there for another. Well, that's what would have been happening. Six yeah. months, and absolutely. Happening. Yeah, we've pulled the uh, existing engine out, engine out mm -hmm. because the transmission. Yeah, we, we we had that transmission built last time. We we're saying the boys have finished that. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to actually fit the transmission by pulling the engine out anyway yeah. because of the firewall clearance with the bell housing. Um, so I pulled the motor and box out because I had to get the um, converter modified to suit the 6R80 front as well. Um, so Peter SDE has been is doing that currently. We started doing this a while back anyway yeah, because yeah. We, 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 we knew the progression that the car mm. was going to take. We knew we were going to put an engine in Yeah, 100%. But, and we, we were hoping to be further along with the standard motor. Time has gone away with us. So we're here and we might as well just start yeah. making the power and, and moving forward um, in the steps that we wanted to take sooner rather than later. I know. We, yeah. do, we don't want the car just sitting there doing nothing. Absolutely, so yeah. Let's just throw the engine in now. 100%. We'll get that... Lovely turbo there. Mm, got a nice little build no. ready to go. I've, and I've had that for a long time. You yeah, know that. Yeah. And I've been busting your balls to put that on. And you keep saying no, no, Every no. Every week. No. Yeah. No, no George. No, no George. Yeah. Not, from not so George, George to no George. George. But you folded the other day. And you're like, you know what? Let's just do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like it's going to be banger. Well, banger it is. So what are you attacking first, crank or? Bearings? Yeah, we'll put the bottom in, we'll put the crank in first. So some bearings, um, check the clearances, put the crank in and um, torque it all up. And then we can start slotting in the pistons one by one, I guess, and do the ring gaps and stuff like that. So we'll start, we'll start on the bottom end and then work up top, I guess. Guys at Dandies, straighten the, the crankshaft by four thou. <laughs> factory, factory crank. Got a slight bend in it. People have been pushing some pretty crazy power out of uh, the stock Ford cranks. They do all right, actually. I think, like, I mean, it's a pretty decent unit. George. Yes. We're going to run this uh, girdle. Yeah, this is another one of Dominator's um, products. Nice and tight. Beautiful. So that'll give us some rigidity in the bottom end, obviously, with that girdle. Common common upgrade um, or strengthening product. So yeah, another, another good product that Dominator has supplied for us. Time to set the ring gap. Yep. Now this is why you do ring gaps. Try to find me the gap. <laughs> That's out of the box. Mm. It's right there. But it is literally touching. Look at that. So let's give it a little grind. With this process, it's it's gonna be tedious like this because if you go too much yeah. <laughs> and too far, then mm. yeah, it's another set of rings. So, fortunately, we've been there, done that, and learnt that lesson. Beautiful. That one's done. 
number one is done. Hey, you got some one-off custom rods there, George. How good are these, mate? It's a shame no one's gonna see them ever again. Look at that. <laughs> at least you know which car they're going in. <laughs> That's how good Michael's been to us, mate. That's cool, that is. Yeah, it's really nice. Does he um, do a, an H-beam or do, does everyone Yeah, he does. Use no, no, he does H-beam. I, I prefer I-beams. You do? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the age-old argument on the internet, I reckon. I versus H. Yeah, okay. I versus H. When realistically, they're almost similar, mm. if you think about it. But when you look at big construction buildings, what sort of beams do they put in them? You've got some uh, turbo rods over there. I do actually. Can nice. compare the pair actually. I'm just going to grab one. Grab one. Just see the difference. So this isn't what came out of this engine. No, that's a turbo rod, this but that, that should be the same rod that's in the gas engine. True. Yeah. So it's essentially what we're using now. Yeah. So even factory uses I beams, but obviously. A way different material. Yeah. And chunkier. A lot more chunkier. Yeah. But even still, the standard rods do put up with a beating. They do actually, yeah. And even if I can do that. Yeah. It's a good comparison. Yeah, that is. Mostly around the, the crankshaft channel there. Mm. Michael's made a new H beam rod, yeah. right? He was telling me he's made a new H beam rod where the oil gallery, the oil supply hole out of the crankshaft, runs all the way down yeah. and lubes the, the gudgeon. I thought it was pretty cool. I'll probably use those in the next motor. The next motor? Oh, the next motor. See, Luke, I plan for the future, right? As always, we do. And we know that this ain't gonna last forever. Speaking of the future, what's going on with this? Nice t-shirt here, oh, Barrow yeah. the Future. Hey, that is, the, that is what's happening. The future is Barrow based. Whether you like it or not, Luke, you will succumb to it. You know what I found the other day? <laughs> Techno. <laughs> How's that? Now for you, kiddies. <laughs> you yeah, I have no idea what that is. It's a tape and it holds music. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of ribbon holds music, mate. But that tape there, was from 96. That's actually got the second, the first or the second Ministry of Sound annual. Yeah. Uh, remixed by Pete Tong and Boy George. Uh -huh. And yeah. I know that because I still listen to it yeah. on YouTube. George, feed me. <laughs> Something that Turbo saying? <laughs> feed me, feed me boost on it. Just regarding the rings, mm -hmm. is there a procedure you Yes. Do? Yeah, yeah, you can't just bang them on. Although they, they end up moving in the bore anyway, mm. but when we set them up, the gaps have to sort of cross each other over so you're not lining the gaps, gaps up, otherwise up you'll, lose, you'll, lose your, yeah, you'll lose your compression in the cylinder. So I'll start with the bottom because I work bottom up, but you can see the gap yep. on, the, on the scraper ring there. I offset that one there, the other one's here and then where the scraper ring meets is in the middle there. So they're all, so there's like a cross section and then that's in, that's in the middle. And then with the second ring, that's up. So what pistons are these? Uh, they're Marley's actually. They're yeah. just a real budget entry level um, forge piston. So now this ring here, the second ring, is gonna be opposite to the scraper. Mm -hmm. All right, so that goes there. And then our top ring, our top ring will go opposite the second ring. Yep. So you can see how we've done that opposite from each other, mm -hmm. and then that's ready to go. So now we've What's got- What's the rough compression we're gonna run? I think this one with the gasket, because we've got an MLS gasket, which gives it a little bit of thickness. I think we'll just be on the bottom end of the nine, mm. nine to one or nine, yeah, around there. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'd be any lower. Um, because we're using an F6, we're still using the FG head, which is a, it's a closed chamber. So that's got a little bit less CC in the chamber, I'm assuming, than the yeah. BABF. 
So yeah, I would say it'd be the bottom end of the nines, I reckon. I can't, have, can't imagine it being in the eights, but hopefully the cams help with, with that as well too, in regards to bottom end response. Time to lube it up. Yeah, oh, baby. Did you put all six in? I think so. Have you heard of five cylinder barrel? <laughs> Probably wouldn't sound any worse, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you funny. Done, mate. Um, put the head on. This is like Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I'll take an O. <laughs> At least I know what engine it's for. Should have that as the intro. <laughs> <laughs> this is really just a OE style, yeah? Yeah, it is, but the OE is a lot thinner. Mm. But being a multi-layer steel gasket, You've used this one before? No. No? No. Like, ideally, I would have preferred to do a firing kit, mm. which we know is um, the way to go for the high boost stuff. But just like the rest of the parts or, I guess, the machine work as such, we didn't mm. want to go too extreme. No. So it's still, I still want to consider this as like a budget. Yeah. I wouldn't say budget, but an entry level entry, uh, yes. engine build. Yes. You all can, right. You could it's not all... an extreme one. Yeah. But you could, you know, you could easily build this. Like, I mean, the pistons. The pistons are under a thousand bucks. Yeah. Like, that's cheap, you know. Oh, look, you could, like you said, fire rings. There's, there's a lot more. Torrington bearings, you, fire rings, you, you know. You need a crank, but cranks, like it just keeps going. It can keep going. So, this is a simple or entry level engine build that yeah. I'd probably even recommend for, and you know what, we can push this. Mm. Like we're gonna push the stock motor, let's see how far we can push this, as always, before we the need to The main reason really for doing this is putting a set of rods in it. That's your first thing. Oh, that's really it. And mm. then you're not gonna go put a set of rods with stock pistons. No. So you might as well put a set of pistons in it, and then you're at this stage anyway. So yeah. the power we were expecting to make with the standard engine, or the power we wanted to make with the standard engine, yeah. That was a ticking time bomb. You never mm. know how long that's going to last because we don't know the history of the engine too. No, no, that's a good point. Um, whereas with this, now, you know, I have, even tuning it, I have a sense of, of faith in what we're dealing with. Yeah. You know, and how far I can push it. And I know how far we can push this, you know. I've had similar combos on the dyno, yeah. tuned them. It's, it, I know this will work and it will do, do, do very well for what it is. Just to be sure, you've got a few sausages of uh, liquid nails there to... Bang on there before the head goes on. More four. Hmm? More four. Hmm? Hmm? You put 50 pounds in it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't need that much powder. You don't need that much boost to make the power. Try when it comes to a barrow, you are correct. There. Yes, you don't need These things boost. make power like Honda engines. Hmm. If, if only they could uh, represent that in the, uh, in the quarter mile. Because <laughs> have you noticed? Power's gone up, but cars haven't gotten much quicker. Oh, yeah, I've noticed. Mm, mm. You've got no man rods, and now <laughs> you've got no man pistons. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Have you done any work to this cylinder head? No, man. Standard as, yeah. The only other thing I did do is change the retainers. Um, Michael from Dominator gave me a set of titanium retainers, yep. which we didn't have. We just had the standard retainers last okay. time. And because we're running crow cams, right, um, these are the second biggest camshafts that Crow make for the barras. We had to use um, a shortened valve stem seal mm -hmm. because once you go to 500 thou lift on your camshaft, the, um, because of the lift, it gets really close or it, it would hit the standard uh, valve stem seal. Okay. So we had to get um, these special valve stem seals 
that are shorter, they're stumpier. You probably won't be able to see yeah. them too well, but they are stumpier over the standard ones. And that's because of these camshafts being on the 500th hour lift mm -hmm. um, limit. Beautiful. Starting to look like a motor. Yep. It's a bit ironic here that you're building an engine for no mang. Mm -hmm. With the picture of the <laughs> mang 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 <laughs> up here. Hey, do you want to see? I found... Hey, what about this one? Hey, mate, my boy mate drew that for me, mate. Don't you worry about that. Back when I had that, I was going to do wastegate, like screamer exits out the front bumper. And I found. I had these made. <laughs> so I'm thinking I could probably do it on the VS, but just get no mang on there instead. That would have been cool. So what do these um, these studs, what do you talk them down to? Well, we've got, they're, they're still 100 foot pound. Or 110, I think he's got 110 foot pound. So they're a little bit more than the last ones, which are 100. The Dominator sell an upgraded stud again, yeah? Yeah. The aged, I think they're an aged material. I can't remember what they are, but yeah, they're nice. They're like 140 foot pound. 140 foot Yeah, pound. that's a lot. Is that a coincidence if you've got yellow on there, George? It's a sign of things to come, man. Eh? That's what it is. So, George. Yo. These gears were supposed to go in <laughs> the old green top engine. Yeah, well, we didn't have time to do them, did we? We, we got here first. So we will put them in the good engine, won't we? Which makes total sense. So yet another product supplied by Dominator Motorsports. Mr. Australia. Dominator, mate, he's been He's got everything for you. He's got it. everything dude. Literally you one can one stop shop. Yeah. One stop shop for an engine build, no problem this man. He's our new best friend. That's a lot of lube, dude. You're in a great workshop, mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pack it. I oh, know there's going to be. Oh, we're packing it. You need packing. That's a piece of packing. You're doing it all wrong. Yeah, always wrong. You know what? I never had a problem. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Great Aussie product, George. Yes, we uh, love a good Aussie product, mate. Made in Australia, I'm not made at all. Pro cams. Yeah. You were saying these are pretty big stick. Yeah, they're the, they call them a medium, but they're this, I think they're the second biggest on their list, I think they got at Maz. So, um, yeah, give them a try. And now that it's going to be easier to tune them having the the hell tech in the sense that the factory software is complicated with the when you cam them well, you've just been bleeding the lifters yeah yeah so i bled all the lifters up got rid of all the old um airlocks and oil that's in that helps doing with this thing cleaned all the rollers the followers there they're all done lubed everything up put these in put the caps on and then um time it up the rb40 is ready to go <laughs> <laughs> the eco barra So George, it looks like I've got to love you and leave you <laughs> to finish this engine by yourself. Well, that's not the first time. Not you? Yeah, you got to go. That's fair enough, man. But we're almost there. left here, is it? No, it's all done. It's all so, in there. Uh, a little bit of a chain kit now. There's another heavy duty timing chain kit that um, Dominator supplied us. Mm -hmm. um, so another great product from him. And um, yeah, we'll just time the engine up, and then it's literally just some covers and sump and get it ready to throw it in because um, yeah, the car's not far off from getting both motor and box fitted. So yeah, so I think off. the next time you see us, we'll probably- we'll Motor be, box you'll, will you'll be, be working in. on the car. Yeah, yeah I'll be Nothing new there. <laughs> <laughs> Just compare the hand, this colouring. Yeah, there you go. Nah, all good. We'll, um, yeah, next next episode, definitely either have it running or working on getting it. Well, let's get it all in, yeah. Yeah, let's get it all in, yeah. Let's have a closer look at that transmission too at some stage. Yeah, well, once we get it back, we'll yeah. have, a, have a good look at it. Converted, like I said, converter's getting modified as well to accommodate the 6R front, so. Once that's back, we can literally put everything together. So we're ready to rock and roll. Awesome.
until next time. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs>